this idea. Stevens Arlinga, even in his recent Need Act, is actually a uh, uh, accommodating interest. Uh, Ellen Hodgson Brown uh, explicitly argued that interest isn't the issue. And what did what did she do when when she was claiming that the most brilliant banking model in our nation's history was this Pennsylvania currency? When I informed her that the explanation of that currency were Mike Montagna's words issued from the fictional mouth of Benjamin Franklin in a parable, what did she do? Instead of hailing it as the most brilliant banking model in our nation's history. The model was the same. It just wasn't an historical fact that Benjamin Franklin even knew about it, much less advocated. The words that you can cite by which Franklin would have done so, and all these people now who who advocate that money is dead is, is, is the video to watch. This is what's wrong with our system. All they're doing is advocating that we, we, we accept a wrong ideal uh, uh, offered by a plagiarist who doesn't even understand the issues. And these people are even citing my words issued through the fictional mouth of Benjamin Franklin in my 1975 parable of perfect economy as substantiating or justifying this idea that debt is the issue. When in fact, uh, indeed, I show how to fund government even without taxation. But in explaining what is wrong with that, that it is inherently inflationary, that every unit of the currency has to have attached to it an obligation to pay and retire the principal from circulation. And who should do that but the person who cons or persons who consume of it. And so, uh, the debt is not the issue it's it's it, that debt is an enablement it's not a debt even it's a it's a promissory obligation you don't go in debt into debt by take for taking a promissory obligation when you obligate yourself to pay for a hundred thousand dollar home as you consume of it each month that goes by, you're paying, you're, you're, you're obligating yourself to pay for the $83.33 worth of that house which you've consumed. You pay it as you go. You don't go into debt. You're obligating to continue to do that, which means that if you ever want to sell that house, you need to make sure that it's one that's con of, of a design and construction and expense that's conducive to someone else taking over the obligation. So this idea that money is a debt is our problem is, is, is actually preposterous. And everyone who comes out of the woodwork, all these plagiarists who, who've adopted it, it, it as an idea now, uh, are, are merely, um, really, uh, they're, they're registering the fact that they are not even masters of the issue because to complain uh, about uh, an obligation to pay principal is to complain about something which is no offense whatsoever and which is not only no offense whatsoever but is actually the very thing which in enables us to sustain all of the prosperity that we are indeed capable of. So this this uh, proposition that money has to be spent in a circulation is a huge offense against us because it would tremendously limit us from the prosperity that we're fully capable and desirable of sustaining. So this person is an, an, an artist they're not a, uh, at least in, in, in no way is it detectable from the body of material here that they've done any substantial work uh, uh, on monetary reform or monetary theory or that they've even understood uh, a proof of, uh, of, of singular solution, which they even uh, cite 
of course, they claim they're promoting uh, the ideas that are necessary uh, for us to understand. Uh, but in fact, on the contrary, in this idea of, of, of promoting uh, uh, the idea, the, 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 the flawed idea, the erroneous idea that, that money can't be a debt, uh, how else can you issue a promissory obligation after all? Um, uh, they're promoting the antithesis of, of an antithesis of solution, not the extreme antithesis. But it is an antithesis because uh, an obligation, not a debt, an obligation is necessary to monetizing wealth. And it is necessary at least for this reason, and that is that every unit of circulation must have associated with it an obligation to pay and retire from circulation or we cannot solve inflation which means that while we might be claiming we're just spending money into circulation and and financing things without paying for them we pay for them inflation in inflation circulatory inflation so um in any case uh uh if we browse around these pages what we find is is this this man is is an artist uh with no body of work even to put your finger on which might incline you to think that uh he's done some exhaustive work which uh merits which warrants his uh his insertion of this of this uh, video into uh, you know our realm of evaluation even uh has he contributed to solution or has he instead injected needless redundant and misleading confusion is the question so if we browse around we find he's a he's a an uh, an acrylic uh, painter he paints with acrylic paints um uh does he claim or recognize uh, or himself even respect intellectual property rights well he he sells prints uh any artist would have to know that uh, you have to put you need to put a copyright on your prints or uh, um anyone might uh, um uh, any un unethical person at least might uh, uh take his own artwork and sell it in competition with him uh, here I've I've got all these images of uh, Paul Grignon's uh, you know paintings and uh, you know and you buy a, a printer or you go to a printer and you print them off and you you mat them and frame them or frame them or whatever and package them and go to our art, art fairs and compete with the artists well um he's selling these videos and what are they but in fact uh bodies of other people's work and whose work is at the root of this, however many plagiarists he might likewise borrow from. But my work, he even lists perfected economy uh, on, as a source, as a resource on his web pages. And of course, all of my work has always been copyrighted, much of it trademarked as well. And uh, is there ever been uh, a, a copyright or trademark notice which didn't say all rights reserved? What right does he have um, pretending that uh, um, understanding such as, for instance, a critical underlying understanding that, that interest is so destructive is merely just assumable in all of these other uh, uh, deductions that he makes without first citing it i mean uh do you just accept this um is it is it public knowledge is it is it obvious well if it was then why weren't people before my works explaining uh, uh exactly how interest comprises an implicit obligation to maintain a vital circulation because your obligation to pay principal and interest out of a circulation which at most is comprised of some remaining principal of course means that you have to maintain a vital circulation or you can't fulfill the obligation so uh you lose all that you've paid toward this property in the end and if it's so 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 only then so long as you can maintain an obligation uh, a, a vital circulation can you even persist in servicing these debts and these terms servicing and and all 
there may be some other people that have used some of these things, but perpetual, unsustainable, uh, uh, inevitable uh, failure, terminal failure. These words come from my work. And why? Because of this vital understanding that, that this obfuscation of, of the currency is terminal. And this person is turning that all around, even citing me as, as, a, uh, as a resource. You see, so this is plagiarism and it's extremely destructive. What do we find if we uh, go around this site? We find all kinds of, of, of preposterous things. I mean, uh, he has quote play, pay, uh, a tremendous number of quotes. Most of these quotes are on my own pages. Um, all right. So if uh, a credible person at least tries to go and find the original source, what happens when you research them out? You find other quotes, so you throw a few other ones in there too. But if you understand the, the issues which you have to resolve, you would restrict those quotes to the set as it exists largely on my pages, which is far more quotes than this. You don't introduce irrelevant quotes. For instance, and I just pick out three that I'm steering right at right now, uh, right in the middle of the page. Um, here, for instance, uh, he has one that says, quote, that is what our money system is. If there were no debts in our money system, there wouldn't be any money, unquote. What's the meaning of that? If there weren't any debts, there wouldn't be any money. Well, this is offered by Mariner S. Eccles, Chairman and Governor of the Federal Reserve Board. What they're trying to do is justify the fact that, you know, you have to assume a debt. Well, it's a very, very poor justification of it because, in truth, the only justification is uh, that every, in order to solve inflation, which is adverse to us, uh, uh, you, every unit of this circulation has to have an obligation to pay and retire it from circulation. You, you don't have any control of inflation or deflation. Otherwise, you know, you can, the, these plagiarists are claiming they can spend money into circulation and then pay it out somehow. But the only right thing to do is for whoever consumes of anything to pay out according to their assumption. Because then and then only do you actually solve inflation, and when you when when you realize that, you come right back to the proposition of mathematically perfected economy, which doesn't separate this pretend that this obligation doesn't exist by this preposterous notion, that, which is a lie, that you can just spend money into circulation and still solve inflation. You're not just spending it into circulation if you're actually solving inflation, because indeed every unit has an obligation to pay and retire it from circulation. Mathematically perfected economy just doesn't pretend that you're just spending money into circulation. Though well, I could say that, you know, because indeed, you know, we're monetizing our wealth and the same way that these people are, except that we don't separate the obligation from the unit of, of currency. So it's that's how it, it maintains justice and solves inflation even without any regulation whatsoever. Simply because we're paying it out of circulation, whoever's consuming of the property is paying the principal out of circulation as they consume of it. This, this obligatory schedule of payment, which is only justice, itself maintains a circulation which is always equal to the remaining value of represented property. So this is how mathematically perfected economy solves the object uh, of solving inflation even without any regulation. Solves it perfectly to the penny even without any regulation whatsoever. So this is an irrelevant quote. Paul Grignon does not offer anything, and he, I mean, he makes the same kinds of assertions, but how do we know um, that this means anything? That if, if, if there were no debts in our money system, there wouldn't be any money. Well, first of all, it's not our money system. It's never been qualified to us. 
It's never been subjected even to public assent. In fact, in the 1912 uh, presidential elections, the Democrat Party's explicit written party platform promised not to create a central bank, as is quoted uh, in uh, uh, Congressman Louis T. McFadden's June 15, 1932 uh, presentation to Congress. So, uh, 